What is up, everybody? Greetings from uh, quarantine. Welcome on in to the call up. Susanna Collins alongside uh, my girl, my my dear, dear friend, Jillian Sakovitz. Um, just right off the top, we all want to know how you are feeling. You had put out a very um, important and heartfelt message that you had, in fact, uh, tested positive for COVID. And just give us mm-hmm. a little a little update. How how are you feeling? I'm good, Suze. You're so sweet. Um, I'm uh, by all accounts on the up and up. I think the nasty highs and lows of the symptoms are one and two weeks behind me. And uh, yeah, um, I'm good. Uh, a lot of good things to come out of it is yeah. now I can donate my plasma and antibodies. So I'm really excited for that. That's awesome. Um, to be able to g- hopefully give that to the people that are really fighting this sure. um, and are very affected by it and made very, very sick by it. So that's a plus. And then another plus was I didn't realize how much of a message maybe it needed to be sent for some people that are maybe more removed from it than we are based on where we're at right now. Yeah. Um, But... I think as sideline reporters, sometimes we're used to annoying everyone, whether it's chasing players, coaches, um, communication staff, asking, asking, asking. So you really don't, it sounds so silly, but you just don't realize how much, you know, the soccer world cares about us. And that was, and that was not totally a surprise, but um, that part did mean a lot to me. But my heart now is just with everyone who is really, really struggling with this and in the hospital and well said our delivery people our medical professionals all of them so i'm on the up and up i can't wait to donate my antibodies and that's where i'm at and anyone who has questions or anything like that continue to ask and Suze, i really need you as i'll drink to that to carry the torch for me i'm drinking Uh, (laughs) of green juice (laughs) so cheers (laughs) Uh, no, Jill, it, I think and thank um, you all of you for your messages. It was it was nice. Well, thank you for for putting it out there, uh, because as you said, I think people there's just there's a lack of knowledge. People people don't know what uh, the actual experience is like of, of not only having it, but like the process of getting tested. And because there's just so many questions and unknown. And I think you shed a lot of light on the subject for a lot of people. And, you know, as you said, we live in New York uh, where this thing is seemingly everywhere. I mean, I feel like every day there's more and more people that I know that are receiving a positive diagnosis. And thankfully, um, you know, many of those people are uh, distribute or um, displaying very mild symptoms. um, And that's a that's good. But a lot of people are not. And you can see with the, the influx of patients in all the hospitals. And so I think just knowing, um, getting some of that inside information, it's important to to put it out there. And we're just, you know, the soccer community is strong and a, a lovely, lovely place. And I, I know I speak for everyone. We're just glad to see that you are on the mend and doing well and feeling okay. Um, it's a that's it's a, a a real positive during this incredibly trying time. So, yay, Jill, we love you. So glad to have you. On the pod and ready to go today. <laughs> I love. Two, I love that you're drinking out of that. a beer stein too. That's great. I had to. I had to keep it um, on par, or like kind of on brand, as I should say. Mm-hmm. But just two like things it. to piggyback off that, Sue's is. Um, I had a couple pe- people reach out to me, and like in the media world and soccer players, and some said, um, like, "Thank you. Like my anxiety is sky high right now, and you actually made me feel." Yeah. better and I think that was one of the cooler messages that I got because my anxiety is sky high now like everyone's is and not because I'm sick but just in general yeah. and talking to people on Instagram is just like what makes me feel better and mm-hmm. then to know that someone sees me sees that I'm okay sees that I'm saying that most days my symptoms were of which I would have gone to work mm-hmm. a couple days I like was laid up on the couch or in bed sure. but other than that I would have gone to work which is also what makes this kind of dangerous Totally. So I like that I've been able to bring a calm because while it's so important for the news outlets to be showing, listen, you can be a 20 year old in a coma in the hospital. It's also good to see that there's plenty of people that are having very manageable symptoms. Mm -hmm. And my last note is and anyone who wants to hear all the symptoms and everything, I kind of tweeted out my timeline and my experience. But um, something else I think people have to know is the person I live with is 99.9 percent Um, positive as well according to the doctor and that person has had zero symptoms so you can be 
thinking you're the hero going to the grocery store for everyone and doing this because you're fine. You can be caring. You might not be. You can you can be you can be spreading it. And another sense of calm I want to bring for people is of the five people in my close friend group that I know who have been tested, of those five, four positive, one mu- zero to maybe just being tired symptoms, two in the middle, being myself included, and one extreme and flu like, and all are on the up and up. And okay, so it, this thing's Good. across the board. Okay. Good. Good. So, Good information, Jill. Thank there. you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's let's have some fun because we're both feeling good and we need a Wait. little we need a little positivity. I forgot to mention this off the top. Just off the top of your head, what day would you say that we are on since MLS was postponed? Oh you know I'm God. keeping track. I know. Okay. Just I know. And I think I want to kind of see what, um, what does it feel like. Like twenty two. I don't know. What are we Did at? You say twenty. I said twenty two. Oh, close. Only day 20. Okay. <laughs> I, don't right, so day 20. I don't know what day, day it is, Jill. I literally day don't know what day it is. since MLS has been. But for every day that it's been, we get closer and closer to soccer oh, coming back, God. girl. I mean, it is it is funny, though. I have to. I wake up in the morning, and I have to check my calendar and be like, okay, no, it's Monday. It's Monday. Didn't know that, but thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's wild. This, is whole, this whole thing is wild. My brain has, like... The way it's it's programmed right now, it's going to well, take a while Chita for me to get on, back. Which, by the way, are you trying to dress like what's her face? <laughs> oh, we're going to get to that. Carol Baskin. What is her name? Carol Baskin. <laughs> I just thought there will be no comparisons to Carol Baskin. Where is oh Don? God. What happened to Don? We'll get to that in just a second. Okay. 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 So uh, let's talk about some fun things because, um, as you know, we're yes, all please. we're all quarantined here, and I just I really want to give um, some shouts to the Colorado Rapids and NYCFC who put out some really really fun stuff on their social channels, um, the coloring books and. You could, you know, there was um, crossword puzzles and little games that people could play. And so our amazing producer, Galena, took it upon herself to do a call-up version. And so there is a call-up coloring book. So if you guys are looking for some quarantine activities, coloring is very therapeutic, I must say. I've done Um, it. And if anyone on the planet actually colors in anything call-up related, like, you'll Mm -hmm. win some major prizes. That's incredible. Hundred percent. Uh, have, okay. Do you have crayons in your apartment? Because, I like, have now markers. Kinda, I got to Amazon Prime some of those. I have boys. mark. I have markers and like um, colored pens. So okay, that's kind of you what won't. I want a piece of art in the mail, please. I, I will <laughs> happily listen. I that's unfortunately good. Look, I did not I need inherit a spot. the art, artistic gene, but I can. I will do a portrait for you. Happily. It's gonna go right there, Suze, in my new little home office. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Uh, okay. Okay. So. <laughs> Did you watch the Tiger King? You did. Whole, you da- ha- whole darn thing. You watched it. Was I, I feel was like. I, was I. Were you not entertained, Jill? OK, you were correct about being entertained. And you're a very good friend because I hate a spoiler. I hate when people are like, oh, my God, you have to watch it because. And then they like spill all the beans. So you were a good friend. But I <laughs> I felt almost so deceived because I heard Tiger King and I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch a documentary about mm-hmm. cats. Yeah. It when actually it's oh, no. just about like really horrible human beings, <laughs> a crap load of them, like an uh, insane amount of psychopaths. You didn't and you every didn't have person a, is an terrible. For, every single for Joe person. Exotic. <laughs> the only guy I like is the former campaign manager that he met oh. in the ammunition section of God Walmart as a manager. God I'm like this guy. guy has a future in something, and I don't know if it's comparative, like because everyone else can is I so talk freaking about horrible. Scene? Can can I just talk about one yes. scene that I think is one of the best, like one of the single best scenes I've ever seen in a documentary, in oh my film gosh. for that matter. Last episode, the dude who he was kind of like the whistleblower on all of it, riding on the wave runner, sunglasses on. To Eye of the Tiger. Just like. Uh, 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 and he's uh, a terrible like, human being, and too. And he's a terrible human <laughs> being, too. But I, I straight up, like, stood up off my couch and, like, fist pumped. Like, I was like, yes! It was so Oh, my gosh. Good. It was so good. <laughs> 
so it, it brought me it was like this moment of levity that I needed so badly but um yeah what a, what a wild and crazy ride Tiger King is all of you y'all. out there aside from watching our MLS classics and everything else that we're putting out there and the call up and extra time if you haven't add Tiger King to your do it, do it. to your um things I don't know yeah. right now yeah <laughs> do it do it and also yes oh. Carol Carol Baskin killed her husband I'm just throwing it out there yeah confirmed we are going to i'm going to include this in the here for this is because this is something that you and i are both here for um mls is now promoting a new initiative it's called mls unites and it's just going to illustrate all the amazing things that everyone is doing to kind of stay connected to our fans and our community communities during this time um starting off with um on monday it was national doctors day and so a bunch of the clubs put out these videos of players just thanking all of our our heroes and the healthcare workers that are oh my gosh honestly the the true real life superheroes right now they're just working so hard and tirelessly to to keep us healthy and under some really really extreme circumstances so um it's really very, very cool. So during this stretch, you're going to see a lot of uh, posts using that hashtag MLS Unites. Um, mm-hmm. You know, just kind a lot of, of like player faces. Like exactly, get ready to see a lot of players. Um, yes, because you know everyone's been every club's been kind of navigating this and figuring out how to manage players from home while also mm-hmm. making sure they're on their training regimens. Um, you're and and the guys are ready, and you're gonna you're gonna be getting a lot of opportunities to to be seeing guys across MLS. It's awesome. And just a way to stay connected. And um, I want to give some love to um, our podcast brothers on on Extra Time uh, who had Robbie Russell, who's a former former MLSer, uh, 14 year MLS veteran who played for D.C. United. But anyway, he is now an emergency medicine intern at the University of Virginia. Um, so he pivoted from an MLS career to a career in healthcare and he has been working the front lines and I, th- I think they actually got him Great right guest. after he had come off a off a shift and so there are people like that um, who have that MLS connection that we're going to be trying to focus on stories like that and and just give them the <laughs> you know the kudos that they so rightfully deserve because they are working harder than anybody right now for sure so we are here for that here for hashtag MLS unites done okay you ready for the fun stuff? You ready? Yeah. I'm just really okay. touched by the way you put that. You said that so well. Oh, I do. Thank you. Oh, I might be a little emotional today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here just, for this. Here for this. Okay. Okay. So. Oh, if you guys have been paying attention at all to uh, social media, because I know I have my screen time is up like a million percent. Um, Oh, it's pathetic. Oh, yikes. It's real scary. But you might you might have seen a spread in the Mexico edition of GQ featuring one Carlos Vela from LAFC. And let me tell you, this photo spread is something. Not only is he the the cover, there's like a. I don't know. There's like a, a four page spread of him, five page spread, all these different. Where can looks. a girl get a copy? Right. <laughs> His hair obviously looks. He look. He amazing. looks good. Um, Carlos Zella is a very handsome man. Like that's there's no denying it. He looks fantastic. However, Jill. However, I have as however. much as, as excited as ah. as here for this I am of of him Blasphemy. being having this this exposure in the spread uh-huh. in GQ. Okay, I didn't listening. love. I didn't love the spread. I thought it was a little bit cheesy. Okay, guys, I'm um, MLS. T- oh I God, can't believe she's I'm saying that. Beside herself. I so am. MLS tweeted this out on March 27th. All you got to do is basically Google GQ Mexico's April cover, mm-hmm. LAFC's Carlos Vela. So I got to say, the front I love. Uh huh. Color scheme a little Miami. It's gray. It's like a very very light yeah. blush. Yeah. Love. A blush. Um, and then you open it. I open my digital copy. <laughs> and the denim is cool. Um, there's like a 70s look at one point. I yep. always am down uh, for that. The denim, the denim on denim was something else, man. Woo! But then, wait a second. Oh, and here we go. Hold on. I got to take, because like, you know, we are working with limited resources right now. Describe this it one, to the people. I just, this oh, no. one. No. I no, like the colors. It's the pose. So he's sitting, for those, for those of you who are listening, he's sitting on the field, like, leg up with his, like, arm propped up on his knee. It's like, it looks, it looks like a senior picture. 
He's you know? kind of. I have a book. picture of myself that I might release based on this, but I don't look. <laughs> I don't look one percent as good as Carlos Vela of me in my oversized. 11th or 12th grade varsity soccer outfit. Soccer. I had uniform. a volleyball picture just like and it. And yes. I'm laying on a soccer ball and it's it's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. And this is yes. almost the same, except he's by the corner flag and I was in the goal. Yeah. Now, I got to tell you, I had very, very minor flashbacks to a certain, um, <gasps> to a certain infamous photo shoot. Um, Does it involve a, a water fountain? The New York Times magazine there only with Carlos Vela's <laughs> soccer ball shot. I got to say it's it's not even ha- gave it's you not those even vibes that bad, but it might be the 2020 version. Landon um, Donovan. But here's the thing. Carlos saved it because he because um, he's a natural. What can I well, say? He's so cool. I mean, he is so cool. You, he, you Nothing is going to make him not cool. But I, I just wanted idea. I wanted it to be as cool as he is. GQ Mexico GQ anyone Vogue. Let the call up design the shoot. I'm just Hi. saying. I think we would be amazing directors for that. I really Me do. I think we've too. got ideas. Talk about hype girls. We would we would put you in your in your best light, so to speak. It has been two years. Two years since the inaugural El Trafico match, where it was at uh, Dignity Health mm. Sports Park. LAFC against the Galaxy and Zlatan's debut. Two years. I was there in person. Holy I watched moly. it. I know. It was like one of the greatest sporting events I will probably ever witness in my life. Um, so I can't help. I can't I can't just let go of Zlatan yet because he's so darn entertaining. And if you follow him on social media, he is putting out all like his, you know, the products that you and I were trying to get so aggressively that we never got. He keeps pushing them out he keeps pushing out these products like, like today very did you see the instagram post today where he's like getting out of bed and like the black hair is down yes yes okay and i i get it right the economy's in the tank it's not good but like zlotty is now the time to be pushing Zlati. your products Slotty, Slotty, can you? I will can say we repurpose your factory for something else he i'm not is, hating on it he is um I think he's donating though. Like oh, if you buy man. if you buy something, he's gonna donate like something to to make help make make masks. Oh, it's the gum. There's Latan gum. You can. He has come out with his own chewing gum, and every pack that he sells, he's going to basically that's going to equal okay. one mask that they are going to make. But it, the whole thing is I just, bite my tongue. The I whole thing tongue. is just bizarre. But I'm still I can't lie. I'm still a kind of live for those posts i can't get over it and just you I know, in celebration don't care about zlatan or zlatan's products anymore because i feel so disrespected because we never got our them. our lack of product simple Wait, as but that the, the tagline can i tell you what the tagline is though yes please stay stay <laughs> like safe stay safe stay fresh how about that how about I that i sprayed perfume on myself once or twice in the last 20 days and when i did i was like and I was like, yep. oh, man, like that's it's just too wild. I know it is crazy, crazy, crazy. So Zlatan is still doing Zlatan things, and that's fun. Um, OK, last here for this Instagram challenges. Oh, boy. There have been many, many, to say the least. We have seen uh, the push up challenge. We've seen the game face challenge. The latest one that I've seen is this blinding lights challenge, which uh, I don't even know where we're, we were trying to find the origin of this. Um, but it's a TikTok thing. And there was a dad that got, became famous because his sons uh, made him do this like funny dance to the weekend song. I just almost had it. And everybody an, an saw it. Acceptable but question. <laughs> Paxton Pomichol and his brothers did it. And it was really actually very, very, very It funny. was adorable. But are we... Are we here for all the Instagram challenges? Because I so, feel like again, there's just so many. Um, disclaimer that we said in our, la- in our last pod, no judgment during quarantine. But some days I'm like, tag me in something. I need something to do. And other days I'm just like, you know what? Enough. I've embarrassed myself enough in the last three weeks of quarantine. Chill. Like, I did a rap to post for an, CJ Sapong. Right. Like, right. What and you came that? up with that all on your own. Like no one really, you know, not, like that's where we're at. It's not great. Like, 
so I just great. don't know how far down the hole of embarrassing I need to be. That I'm afraid of where I'll be at the end of all of this. And like maybe that's the beauty. Like the very small silver lining in all of this chaos is like we get back to basics a little bit. Yeah. Um, and maybe less pictures of looking perfect and butts and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No filters. Hashtag no filter. No. Who am I kidding? Meanwhile, like every video I need a filter. I so know. I'm like, exactly. Bleh. I'm like, oh, my God, the bag's under my eyes. Oh, make it I stop. do have a confession, though, for you, because last year, last week's here for this was uh, Christmas stuff. And you were very on board with like I whipping was. out Christmas things, Christmas movies. Um, so challenge. Am. Yeah, I'm here for it if it helps. Um, may or may not do them. If you tag me in them, can I, I have a huge confession? Guess what I was doing yesterday when I was washing my dishes? What? On Spotify, what came up was my Christmas playlist. <gasps> Mariah Carey. I got Carey. like one song in. Oh, all of them. I got like one song in and I was like, oh my God, I have to change this. It's March, whatever month it you is. You didn't change it. And then I didn't change it. It it played for like an hour and I was. That's what I'm talking it, about. It was the boost I needed. It just makes you. It is. It's happy. Mm-hmm. It's happy. It and beautiful. we need happy right now. There is no shame in that. I love it. Okay. So Jill is kind of here for the Instagram challenges. I think I'm here for it. I think just because I'm entertained, but same thing. Like, I, I'm not necessarily going to participate unless it's a rap challenge because clearly I'm gifted. All right. Well, time now for our AT&T call to the field. And we are so, so thrilled today to bring in our guest, Will Trapp from Inter Miami. Uh, Will, first things first, Jill and I have been <laughs> discussing the Tiger King. Questions. The Tiger King. <laughs> have you watched Tiger King yet? don't ruin it for me don't spoil okay. anything okay okay <laughs> please do not we won't. so that's a no that's a no i'm as telling of, you as of now it's a no it is okay th- save it, it. Is, save okay. it is wonderful wonderful quarantine <laughs> entertainment um but we're like i said we're so happy to have you we always feel like jill and i have talked a lot about the guys that we love to interview in mls and your name comes up all the time because you are just one of the the all-time nicest human beings that we both have have ever encountered and so we wanted to have you on today just to bring a little bit of uh, a little bit of sunshine to the pod so how tell us tell us something good that has come from from this quarantine for you well first of all thanks for having me on guys i don't know if it's the (laughs) the sunshine that i'm blushing or the, the red i don't know uh, no, I think the, the <laughs> quarantine has been difficult. It really has been hard. Um, and I know it's it's been hard for everyone. But for myself, a, a boost, so to speak, for, for all of this has just been the time of family. I mean, we really do n- not have a lot of it during the season. Uh, yeah. Preseason's a chaotic time, and you're traveling here, there, and everywhere. And um, to have – we have a five-month-old, and, and to be around him and be around my wife is, has been amazing. It's a little bit of Groundhog Day. I won't lie. It's a little bit of Groundhog <laughs> Day. Um, but that's been incredible. That's been incredible to spend the time with that. That's such a nice positive. I know a I couple know. guys with, like, that. babies at home that are, like, getting this time they wouldn't have otherwise expected. Sure. Um, what has Inter Miami's kind of protocol been for you guys? How are you staying fit? Do you have the soccer itch, though, that's like you can only spend so much time on a bike and kicking a ball up against the side of your house <laughs> to qualify as like training? What are you doing and how are you feeling about it? Yeah, that that I think is the hardest part. Um, I will give our, our group and our um, our strength conditioning coaches and everyone uh, a, a huge shout out because the, the way in which they've kind of given us a plan made it easy for guys, whether you have gym equipment, whether you don't have gym equipment. Um, we've had to get a little creative, but um, thankfully the weather here is great. You can go outside, you can run, you can do all those things. Um, unfortunately, the parks are all closed, so you kind of have to get creative of when you can go to the park. Um, I am up all the time because I have a five-month-old, so uh, <laughs> I end up running at like 6 a.m. because it, no cops can kick me out of the park at 6 a.m., so... <laughs> We'll just uh, we'll just do that. But they've done an amazing job of making it, like I said, super easy for guys to to maintain fitness. Um, we actually have been doing some some things similar to um, to this in terms of having Zoom meetings with our with our coaches um, to keep up with some of the model play philosoph- uh, philosophy philosophy type, types of stuff for the club um, and and our game model as individuals on the team and as a as a collective to keep our minds going while physically we can't always be together. 
Yeah, I think it's so important. I the creativity thing is uh, yeah. is so important. I have like a little like makeshift Pilates studio like right behind me. So that's my you go, girl. I know. Listen, you just do what you can. You just need a little a little space. It's fine. Um, Will, I know um, you know you're, you're new to Miami. This is you know a, a, a recent Miami transplant after the move from Columbus. How are you guys settling in? And what are your what are your impressions about Miami? What do you like about it? We love it. I mean, we really do. It's it's obviously a very different place than than my hometown in Columbus. Um, I think, like I touched on, the weather is incredible. I mean, it really is nice <laughs> to, to just have sunshine every day. Yeah, you look tan. You look tan. You look I, tan. Say, you look and I am jealous. Happy and you relaxed. Don't look like and you've been in quarantine, and I'm, I'm very very lacking, jealous. I'm not lacking vitamin D. Um, that's for sure right now. So the uh, the weather is incredible. The club has been in, like from the first moment we got here. Um, just top top class i mean the way in which they treat the players the way in which they try to get you settled immediately the the way in which um the facilities are being built and put together and the coach i mean everything has been just top class truly uh and and i like to look at it this way of when all of this news kind of came out and it was right before our home home opener and there was a lot of obviously excitement around it and then kind of disappointment the fact that we weren't going to play this game but um, Jorge and David both came to the training facility and, and talked to us all as players. I mean, they, they were there. Like, for me, I think it, it just shows their involvement and belief in, in this project of they want to be there in person to tell us. They want to be involved. And, and that, to me, was just amazing to see. Uh, you knew, our, like, know. literally our next <laughs> question like, was both going to be like, my so did you like, meet David? Did you meet David? Yeah. David, David. Like? And everyone describes him. Like um, when Suze met him with the uh, Miami expansion announcement and interviewed him so nicely. I, um, I don't remember. Po- everyone anything describes I said him. him as that, like polarizing. You black out. Like, what was your David Beckham experience, Will Trap? Yeah. Um, I mean, you're blushing. <laughs> yeah. Am I blushing now? You caught me. Uh, but like, okay, for me, it's so interesting because as a as a young soccer player, like. Everybody knows David Beckham from watching him play and everything. Right. Um, but I think he's one of the rare cases, if not the only case, of someone that's probably more famous now that he's not playing. Um, just because of how he's – his image and the, the person that he is and his philanthropic worth, everything. I mean, it, it's it's this larger-than-life type of personality. But then you meet him and he's he's down to earth. He knows your name. He shakes your hands. You, he looks you in the eye and you're like – Dude, you're always camera ready. Like, how is this possible? <laughs> like, your hair is like, what? Perfect. I would love to know that secret. But he's just so, like, just down to earth in, in someone that you you wouldn't always expect. And I think that's been amazing to see um, the, the personal nature of, of who he is as a person um, beyond all the accolades as a, as a professional. Do you know what's funny, Will? After, um, as Jill mentioned, I got to interview him when Miami was announced um, as an expansion team. This was in early uh, 2018. And I don't remember anything that I asked him because I was so starstruck. <laughs> yeah. But afterwards, like it wasn't just my like girlfriends. It was my guy friends who were like, <laughs> what was David Beckham like? And the one question that they all wanted to know, they were like, what did he smell like? And I was like, is this a thing? <laughs> and I was like, this is so bizarre. And I was like, well, he, he smelled great. I don't know. But Will's is... trying to see if he remembers the smell. I don't know if I remember the smell. <laughs> I, uh, I was yeah. just going to ask if you had any recollection of, of, of David Beckham. He was probably, maybe he was wearing his own cologne. I think he has his own yeah, scent some of that. out there. Maybe the you guys... Do we think it was Laton? Right yeah. yeah, it's Laton. Yeah, that's right. It's Laton, I can actually personally attest, he smells, he smells good. Zlatan does? During the game, I remember I was walking, and I'm like, so, oh my, and I turn around, this guy's like, oh my, this guy smells good. He's <laughs> promoting his own brand <laughs> while playing. That's so Zlatan. Hey. He's, how many, like, putting on 50 squirts before he goes out? Just, hey, <laughs> it, sm- it smelled great. That's all I, that's all I can say. <laughs> so did you buy it know. afterward? No, I did not. I did not. I did not buy it. Um, <laughs> good information. So... You were born and raised in Columbus, mm-hmm. part of the crew for seven years, right? Yep. So that's pretty rare that you get a guy who gets to spend that much time with one team to start his career, but then his hometown team as 
Well, when you found out you're going to be traded, did it come as a surprise or were you kind of eyeing that that was going to be your final year in Columbus? Yeah, I think, um, look, the time in Columbus, it's amazing. It was amazing. Uh, it's home. I, I can't say enough good things about my experiences there. Um, but I think ultimately you, you want to try something new um, and you want to grow and you want to find something different. And for me, um, it felt like that time to move on. Uh, and it wasn't a surprise. It was more of a surprise of just where are we going to land more than anything. Um, but then as I learned more about Inter Miami and the coaching staff and knowing Paul McDonough and all the great work he did at Atlanta, um, it, it made sense that this would be a, a, an amazing landing spot. And like I touched on earlier, it hasn't, it hasn't disappointed from the, the first moment I set foot. So did you guys have a list of like a couple cities? Like we would not be mad if we ended up here. Uh, you know what? It, it, not really. I mean, my wife and I, we were just kind of putting it in, in fate's hands and seeing what happened. Um, and ultimately uh, we, we believe that things happen for a reason and you fall where you fall and that that's where you're supposed to be. So this, uh, this is a great, great spot for us. It's the nature of the job that yeah. you're in. Okay. So I tell me a little bit about Diego Alonso, because I feel like this is a guy I, you know, we know that he was a, a successful head coach in Mexico, but like he's kind of this like enigma in, sure. in MLS. So like what what is he like and what have your impressions of him of him been so far? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think one of the first things for me, I mean, being in Columbus, Spanish is not commonly spoken <laughs> uh, so uh, okay. the uh the white bread america i had to i had to tap back into my five years i took of spanish uh and very quickly with diego it's interesting um from the first session obviously everything is in spanish but we have an english translator and all that type of stuff but to see his magnetism as a coach um he has this like just passion to to draw players in uh and and it's funny, very quickly, I was like, all right, I don't understand everything you're saying in Spanish, but like... But I believe you. But I believe, <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm like in, man. Um, so his his ability to um, to bring a group together, you can see from the first moment, um, he has, for me, a, a great posture and idea of how he wants to play the game, how he wants to be attack-minded and attractive and score goals and um, put the put the game on our terms. I, I think he, he has a really good mind for that. And the more I've gotten to, to know him and see how he works every single day, his staff, they are, um, they build things well, right? Like it's, it's something where you're an expansion team and everything's brand new, but every layer is being built day by day, week by week, month by month to, to formulate something that's more than just, okay, we want to just be this. He's always building the, the full package which I think is, is, as a player, it's stimulating and you grow and you learn. And uh, it's been amazing for me. And I think he looks good on the sidelines. His, his suits are always tailored nicely. Oh. He looks sharp. Um, uh, he might be our best dressed then. He could very, be. Very well dressed. He could be. Um, but his, his personality, is it brings the best out of his group for sure. Now I want How, to meet him. I know. So, I mean, How, you've... Now you've played you've played under Greg Berhalter, Caleb Porter. Like how how do how does he compare to those guys? Are they all just like completely different as as head coaches? Is are there any similarities? Yeah, I mean I think each one of them brings their own individual qualities, right? I mean, spend spending the most time under Greg, knowing Greg the most intimately. Um, I would say he and Diego are very similar in in how they look at the game. Um, and how they want to affect the opponent with how we play, right? And I think Diego is, uh, he's a little more fiery. Greg is more reserved, more even keeled, as you guys, um, as you know. Um, oh, yeah. But the, uh, the ideas are the same. And I think for me, that's why it, it's a good fit because I, I had great success. I love playing for Greg. So um, that's why with Diego, it's been fairly seamless as well. You mentioned Greg Berhalter, and people always kind of have that <laughs> stoic, quiet impression of him. Yeah. And what we always try to pry out of people when we have like a Greg Berhalter type is like, can you please tell us a, like a Greg Berhalter story where like 
he just went off or did something hilarious or something funny. Like, can we just get a <laughs> oh, you have one, don't you? Can we get a, just a good Greg story? Please? Yeah. So Diego's your coach now. So we yeah, we'll wait on that one. <laughs> one of my favorite things with Greg is like, yes, that like, like serene, very stoic, calm. But then like check his sneakers on the sidelines. Like this is what all he drops like some wild sneakers that you're like wait a second i never noticed this guy's got a little bit like going on like he was oh, we I were talking this. about some off-white nikes he had and he's like i don't know when i should wear them like are the, should i go with like the navy blue trousers or what i'm like what dude like, are you serious so That's he's adorable. like a, he's like a pretty big sneaker head which i think is so funny um i love that and he's i the first time i met him I'm 20 years old and i go into his office and we're sitting there and it's like, he asked me a question. I answer the question, silence, 20 <laughs> seconds, like dead eye contact. I'm like, dude, look away. What's going on right now? So like he, he's always like pushing you. But once you get to know him, you know that he's like testing you, but it wears off after you like know him. So it's like not intimidating at all. But at the beginning, you're like, this is the scariest human being I've, what is I've going ever on? met in my life. So, That's yeah, the, ch- the sneakers on the sideline is one that I think is, it brings out a little bit of his character that you wouldn't always think. Ah, oh, th- that was such a, an awesome nugget that we just learned about yeah. Greg Berhalter. And now, guess what? I'm going to be checking his shoes every yeah. time I see him. This is so sneaky. great. Right? It's sneaky. I like it. Um, okay. Well, I want to take um, memory a, little, lane. a little trip down memory lane. Um, yes, because please. Because you've, you've had some outstanding moments and one that just kind of like keeps popping up when whenever we think about you july 2018 the comeback win columbus against orlando you score the absolute banger from 35 yeah. yards out to win the game which was oh i mean i like i watched i have watched <laughs> that goal probably yeah it sounds least, like it, Seuss. at Jeez least Louise. 15 times <laughs> it was amazing it was so great it was like such a high it drama. was amazing oh it was so great and then everyone like piles on you and the field oh it was so good but i i know how many times i have watched that goal how many times will have you rewatched that goal well it's funny i only have two goals to my name so it's like i either watch that or i watch the other one so uh i think the the best part for for me and that is like you watch it and then you try to remember the actual like memory that you had on the field and it's funny how they like blend together as one um and i forget like the physical feelings at times and then i'm watching the video i'm like oh okay yes i remember that mike passed me the ball and then as i as i hit it i'm kind of like just hoping that i hit it okay and then i'm watching i'm like no that's a goal for sure like after i after i hit it i'm like no that's going somewhere and then i turn and just start running and then zach just like big old grizzly bear like just tackles me um but the yeah the emotions of it were incredible i mean it's especially if you put it in the context of like where the club was at that time for me it's it's really interesting to to see how people have responded like crew fans of this was a dark period for us as fans and this was something that kind of brought us through that and i think for me it, that's really special as well um yeah but i try to watch it not not a ton, but some. For yeah, sure. sometimes. For sure. Sometimes. Yeah. And you mentioned like fans and how they reacted to it. And when we told people we were having you on, we had a fan kind of want to know. Yeah. Um, at Rat called AJ. That's hilarious. Andrew Johnson. He wants to know. Will did he keep the cleats or ball from his game winning goal against Orlando? Like, how does that work? I know. Like, did you swap jerseys with anyone that day? How'd that go? Uh, I kept the jersey. It was, um, I think it was like a military appreciation night or, or something because we had a uh, red, white, and blue. It was stripe. around the 4th of July. Yeah, red, white, and mm-hmm. blue, like different yeah. numbers and that type of stuff. So I have the jersey. Um, I got the, like, Greg would always do the game ball for when we won a game. So all the boys would sign the, the ball. So I have that ball as well. Um, the boots, I don't, I don't think I kept them, um, but I kept the jersey, kept the jersey in the ball for sure. Um, one more kind of going back even further than that. I have a story of you from when you're 16, believe it or not, really? according to your dad. Okay. <laughs> Are you nervous? Throw it at me. I think I know where it's going, but let's do it. When I interviewed him, I believe we were in Cleveland, um, for gold cup and yeah. I talked to the 
good old trap family who was yeah, lovely. Yeah, yeah. I, I said, can you, that. I did the Greg Burhalter thing. I'm like, can you just tell me something about Will where we can like really get to know him? And he said <laughs> that there was this epic story of you, I think playing youth soccer against a rival town. Yeah. Sure it was high school soccer. It was high school soccer, yeah. And he just told the funniest story and having getting it through a dad, because we all know how dads are, especially when they're on the sidelines for their kids. He was just loving it. He's like, they were pestering Will all game. And then... He scores the goal and they win and he runs over to the fans that had been heckling him and he thought you were going to throw up the middle finger, yeah. but you didn't because you're nice little <laughs> trap and you just took a bow. Yeah, I try to try to be reserved, I guess. I don't know if that was like the most my, my best moment, but essentially like it's my, I think, junior year in high school or something and we were playing. One of my best friends was on the other team um, and their student section, like I knew like every kid in their student section. It was like one of those things where like yeah, they yeah. knew me, but like yeah. it was just fun for them to like heckle the whole time. Um, and it was like every time I touched the ball, like you suck or boo or whatever. You know? <laughs> and it was like, wow, this is pretty relentless. Like the entire game, good for you guys. Um, but then like I, I, I think I scored and we won one zero or something. So I just like trotted over in front of them and like took a bow and like I think my youth coach was there and he was like pissed off at me because it was like not a very professional moment but I was like it felt really good to oh I in. love like, it I really kind of needed it you know um so yeah showing off a little bit of competitive colors there for sure now I'm but, excited for like should you score for Miami against yeah. like a rival or like yeah. this would be a tough one but would also be really cool like <laughs> all right all right Sh- Suze came up with a great old game oh, this is yeah. i mean th- listen the creative that's named the, after the creative you. juices are just flowing in, in plenty of right plenty now. of time plenty of time to think right? about oh, things i right? got nothing but time no this is so not original at all but um we're gonna play a little kind of like a quick fire game like we want to get to know will trap so we're calling it trapped with trap because we're trapped we Let's literally ride. are trapped and inside, now you are trapped because we, we have you on will video. trap and we you are trapped with us and there's yep. there's no escape will it. okay we're so are you ready you ready for your first question Let's in trapped go. with trap why is there only one l in will so my family is last name trap my dad always makes the joke that we were like the stable boys for the von trap family even though we're not related <laughs> to them at all but my <laughs> I'm the youngest of three. My dad wanted to name me Wilhelm because, like, traditional Austrian German mom was like, "No chance are you naming my son Wilhelm." Wilhelm. But he liked W I L of Wilhelm, so um, he got okay. that part at least. Okay, got Wilhelm. It. Wilhelm. Wilhelm. <laughs> uh, Wilhelm, you're always so nice. What ticks you off? What ticks me off? Uh, People's lack of spatial awareness is probably my biggest pet peeve ever. If I'm at the grocery store, I guess now you keep your six feet, your your social distance. <laughs> but if people are like unaware, like mm, not a not a good day, uh, not a good thing for me. I listen. I'm with you on that one. Okay, what is your quarantine guilty pleasure? Like food? Like oh man, there's, there's got to be one. So. We are uh, scoops of ice cream every single night. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, we've also glass of wine, ice cream every night. Like, and then sometimes I throw. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> LeBron James also is always drinking. Yeah, yeah sheesh. Um, so yeah, the glass of wine, r- red or white, doesn't matter. We don't discriminate. And then ice I like cream. your style. Yeah, it, you need it with uh, a five-month-old, y'all. Yeah. You need it. Um. What's another one here? Uh, you can sing. You can? I didn't know that. Oh, sing. Trap can sing, y'all. Yeah, I will sometimes sing I for us. <laughs> you guys want a song? Oh, man. Um, well, do you sing to your son? I do. I do. What do you sing to, what do you sing to Theo? To Theo? Oh, man. I sing anything. We make up Baby Shark. Like, we threw Baby Shark at him. Um, and that actually, it was unbelievable. It worked, like, so well, which I couldn't actually believe. Um, but then I just, whatever comes to mind. Um, I like Leon Bridges. You guys like Leon Bridges? Oh, I love Leon Bridges. Uh, so, like, he's obviously a baby. So, baby, 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 I'm coming home, girl, to your tender, sweet loving. So I give him some of that. It doesn't oh actually, it doesn't God. actually calm him down. Though, so We've been <laughs> serenaded by Will Trapp. You just yeah. calmed me down. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. So, All right, final okay. one. 
right now, if you had to say, who is Miami's rival? I mean, it's Orlando for sure, right? I mean, in-state rival. Obviously, we haven't played him yet, but um, I know when that comes when that comes across the, the ticker, it's going to be a, an awesome atmosphere, an amazing game. So I can't wait for that one. Ugh. Will Trap, everyone. That Cheers, was so gang. fun. Thank you so, so much for uh, for coming on and spending this time with us. And, you know, we said it at the beginning. We just needed a little sunshine. And Will Trap, Wilhelm Trap yeah. delivered yeah. the sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to add, Suze. We asked him at the beginning, what's the thing that ticks you off? And the next thing is calling him Wilhelm Trap. <laughs> All right. We're so, sorry. No more. No more. Thank you, Will okay. Trap. Gosh, I could use Will Trap like a little, like just a daily serenade, you know? I, I it, can his pipes, man. Dude can actually sing, and Leon Bridges is truly one of my favorite artists. So, like, I am, I am just all on board. I think, I think, I think the a daily Trap dose family of, has a good in quarantine Will, with a good Will singer. <laughs> Vocals. I'm so um, impressed. He was great. His wife Beth should sign him up for cameo to make a little extra money. You know, get a I serenade agree. from Will Trap. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of U.S. soccer fans and MLS fans out there that would, that would pay that. for that crap. By the end of this week, I might end up paying for that. Who knows? I'd like I, I'll have Will sing me a happy birthday. You know that'd be great. Um, while it's not your birthday, there is more. There is much more exciting stuff coming up for MLS. As some of you have seen, and I know we've been talking in the chat room on YouTube or Facebook. MLS has been airing these classics, and it's been really fun to go back. And watch some of these. Um, one was the 06 MLS Cup. The other one, 2011 MLS Cup, which our own Kaylin Carr was in for the Houston Dynamo. This Friday is a big one. I know. It's going to be know. Atlanta United, the Portland Timbers, 2018 MLS, MLS Cup. 2018. Cup. Um, it's going to be myself alongside Andrew Wiebe and some very, very special guests that were much more important in that match than myself or Andrew Wiebe. So... <laughs> Stay tuned for that. That's this Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern on Facebook and YouTube. That is going to be a blast. Good memes. I might put my ring on to remember. Yeah, you should. Um, I think and, uh, so we're going to be doing these MLS Classics remixes um, kind of periodically. So just stay tuned for that. But they're going to be on the Facebook and YouTube pages. And we're going to get the former players to to comment on them and uh, be part of those broadcasts. So it's going to be really cool. So Keep your eye out. And there's for one those. more. Uh, also, yes. Yeah, so Fox Soccer have launched a new digital show called Indoor Soccer, and it's going to be John Strong, Stu Holden, Alexi Lawless. I think they're going to be doing this every single week. You can watch it on Fox Soccer Twitter, uh, their Facebook, and YouTube, and um, just a great way to kind of keep the soccer conversations going during this uh, this hiatus that that we're on. But um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I love those guys. They're gonna they're gonna make it. They're going to make it fun. For sure. I'm looking For forward sure. to that. Cheers, Suze, and to our, all of our listeners out there. Um, yes, you know. are listeners, but for some of you, you're now viewers. Don't forget, you can also watch this podcast on YouTube. And, guys, we Very need some true. updated, like, ratings. Last time you all rated us was a while ago. So if you could give us the five stars, those give comments. Give us some love. We'd appreciate Because we all need a little love right now. If you squeeze a little time in for us, we, we could use a little digital love. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. And uh, also just, you know, keep keep listening and watching and hit us up on social media at Susanna Collins, at Jillian Sakovitz on Twitter and Instagram. Um, we, you know what, like I said, our screen time is up. So we're we're on that thing and we will answer. We so pretty much hit answer us up with anybody. questions, Netflix recommendations, whatever you got, bring it to us. Bring it to the call up. Stay home stay safe jill we're so glad you're on the mend i'm good i love sister. you girl i love you too cheers <laughs>